Here's a sim on enterprise risk management. An ERM is always tested on a BEC exam, but it could seem confusing. Is it the same as the COSO internal control integrated framework? No, not exactly, but there is plenty of overlap from that. ERM is a separate framework. It's a framework that provides a basis for coordinating and integrating all of an organization's risk management activities. ERM is based on the premise that every organization exists to provide value for its stakeholders. Stakeholders extend more than just stockholders. Stakeholders include customers and employees, as well as stockholders. The theory is that ERM is based on the premise that every organization exists to provide value for these stakeholders. And I have a separate SIM on ERM value and all the different types of value that are provided by ERM. So this SIM is going to be about risk and all the different risk concepts that the BEC exam loves to test you on could be a SIM, could be multiple choice, but you've got to know these terms. So if you get a SIM like this, it'll say for each numbered item, pick from the list the ERM concept that is being described. An item may be chosen once, more than once, or not at all. Now some of these terms from the list you may not be familiar with. So what we're going to do is go through them in order the first time and then we'll see the sim the way it would more likely appear on the exam. So the first time through question one is going to relate to mission, question two to vision, and then strategy so that we get familiar with these terms. So question one, the core purpose of an organization. The key is the term core purpose. And the core purpose of any organization is its mission. And every organization has a mission. Tesla's mission is to prove that electric cars could be better, quicker, and more fun to drive than gas cars. Number two, the organization's aspirations for what it intends to achieve over time. And that's its vision. And every company has a vision. Tesla's vision is to accelerate the world's transition to renewable energy. That's what it intends to achieve over time. Sometimes on the exam you'll see the terms mission and vision together, but they do have separate definitions, so now you know what they are. The mission is the core purpose, the vision, what the company intends to achieve over time. Now how do we get there? Number three. The plan to achieve the entity's mission and vision and apply its core values. And that's the strategy. So strategy is just the plan to achieve the entity's mission and vision and apply its core values. Strategy communicates how the organization will achieve its mission and vision. Every company needs that strategy for Tesla launching new products like the Cybertruck and the Roadster 2.0. That sounds like their strategy for 2021. That's probably how they will try to achieve their mission and vision. So strategy is the plan to achieve the entity's mission and vision. And that takes care of the first three on our list here. A lot of courses teach memorization, but the I-75 difference is association, not memorization. So we're gonna associate strategy with mission and vision. Number four, the measurable steps taken to achieve the entity's strategy. And that's what business objectives are. Business objectives are the measurable steps taken to achieve the entity's strategy. And every company needs these business objectives in order to achieve the strategy. Strategy is broader in scope. Business objectives are more specific. So now you can see the theme here, association not memorization. We've now associated business objectives with strategy, strategy with mission and vision, and when you can associate, that's an aha moment. And what do you do with an aha moment? You write it. You take a note of it. Because as you write it, in your own words, you begin to remember it. As opposed to underscoring, highlighting, and circling what somebody else wrote, what does that prove that you learned? nothing. Number five, the possibility that events will occur and affect the achievement of strategy and business objectives, and that's what's known as risk. Risk is that possibility that events will occur, and what will those events do? 
they'll affect the achievement of what? Strategy and business objectives. So now we've further associated risk with what we already know about strategy, the broader picture, and business objectives, those specific steps to achieve strategy, risk could interfere with that if certain events occur. Number six, the maximum amount of risk an entity is able to assume, and that's risk capacity. Risk capacity is the most risk that an entity is able to assume. So risk capacity is the most amount of risk that an entity is able to assume and still be able to achieve its strategy with its business objectives and be able to accomplish its mission and vision. Number seven consists of the amount and types of risk that the organization is willing to accept in pursuit of value. And that's our risk appetite. Risk appetite consists of the amount and types of risk that the organization is willing to accept in pursuit of value. So risk, risk capacity, risk appetite, we want to associate them together while risk capacity is the maximum amount that the entity is able to assume and still survive, risk appetite is the amount and types of risk that the organization is willing to accept in pursuit of value. And in defining its risk appetite, what does the entity consider? Its mission, its vision, its prior strategies, and of course, its risk capacity. Risk to a company, here's another way to associate, is like garbage. Risk is like garbage, right? The amount of risk that an entity is able to assume is its capacity, like a garbage can. How much garbage can they put in the can before the lid just won't close? That's risk capacity. Risk appetite consists of how much garbage they're ready to take on in pursuit of the value that they want to create. And in defining that risk appetite, defining how much garbage they're ready to take on, the entity considers its mission, its vision, its prior strategies, and its risk capacity. Number eight, the range of acceptable variation in performance results relating to achieving business objectives is known as what? That's tolerance, sometimes known as risk tolerance. COZO calls this risk tolerance. ERM just calls it tolerance. And that's the range of acceptable variation in what? in performance results relating to achieving business objectives. So tolerance has to do with acceptable variation in performance results. So notice the difference between risk appetite and risk tolerance. Risk appetite describes the amount of risk the organization is willing to accept in pursuit of its value. Tolerance is the range of acceptable variation in performance results. Number nine, a specific action taken by management to bring an identified risk within the organization's risk appetite. And that's a risk response. A risk response is an action taken by management. They identified a risk. They took a response to that risk in order to bring that risk within the organization's risk appetite. Responses to risk include Acceptance, they could do nothing and just accept the risk. They could try to reduce the risk somehow. They could share the risk with another party, maybe by buying insurance. They could avoid the risk altogether by maybe divesting or selling that particular risky investment. Or they could go out and pursue the risk because of maybe the reward is so great. Maybe they identified a risk and they said, well, it's a huge risk, but we're going to pursue it because we think that the reward's gonna be incredible, like Tesla, right? What was the risk that they were gonna succeed? Tremendous risk, but they pursued it because they knew that if they did succeed, the reward would be worth it. So these are risk responses. All of these are risk responses. And I have another sim on ERM where we go through all these risk responses, just like we do here, one at a time. But in this sim, I just want you to know that a specific action taken by management to bring an identified risk within the organization's risk appetite is a risk response. And risk response should reflect risk severity. How severe the risk is will determine the risk response. Management should bring risk within risk appetite and performance outcomes within tolerance.
Number 10, the risk that exists in the absence of management actions to alter its severity. And that describes inherent risk. Inherent risk is the risk that exists in the absence of management actions to alter its severity. And that's not that different than the audit definition of inherent risk, which is that there's a risk of financial statement misstatements before we consider management steps, which is to put controls in place. So inherent risk with ERM is the risk that exists in the absence of management actions to alter the severity of a risk. So one of our risk responses might be to take no action. In that case, we have risk acceptance. We just say, okay, we're going to accept that risk. We're going to take no action. So inherent risk is the risk that exists in the absence of management actions. Number 11 now. After management assesses the severity of risk, the risk the entity prefers to assume knowing that management has acted or will act to alter the severity of that risk. And that's known as the target residual risk. The target residual risk is the risk the entity prefers to assume knowing that management has acted or knowing that management will act to alter the severity of that risk that has been assessed. So that's our target. That's what we prefer to assume knowing that we're going to act or we will act or have acted to alter the severity of that risk. Number 12, after management assesses the severity of risk, management then acts to alter the severity of risk with various risk responses. Remember what they are. They might be to pursue the risk, to accept the risk, to share the risk, reduce the risk. According to ERM, which of the following is said to remain after that? And the answer would be actual residual risk. After management acts to alter the severity of risk with various risk responses, what remains is actual residual risk. And actual residual risk should not exceed target residual risk, which is the risk the entity prefers to assume knowing that management has acted or will act to alter the severity. Now, what did we do? We went through these in order. Now what we're going to do is scramble it because on the exam, they're not going to make it easy for you to associate mission and vision with strategy and business objectives the way I did when I taught it to you. That's the I-75 way, but that's not the AICPA exam way, right? Nobody else is going to do that for you. So remember, enterprise risk management is a framework that provides a basis for coordinating and integrating all of the organization's risk management activities. ERM is based on the premise that every organization exists to provide value for its stakeholders, not just its stockholders, also its customers, its employees. So this sim is on key concepts with ERM, especially with regard to risk. For each numbered item, pick from the list below the ERM concept that is being described. An item may be chosen once, more than once, or not at all. And just like the exam, I'm going to surprise you with three terms that you weren't expecting. Severity, stakeholders, and enterprise risk management. So here we go. Number one might be a specific action taken by management to bring an identified risk within the organization's risk appetite. And the answer is a risk response. And we had this question just a few minutes ago, it's the exact same question. A risk response is an action taken by management to bring an identified risk within the organization's risk appetite. And what are some of those responses? Could be risk acceptance, do nothing, risk reduction, risk sharing, risk avoidance, or even risk pursuit. Risk response should reflect risk severity. And management should bring risk within risk appetite and performance outcomes within tolerance. Here's number two, the core purpose of an organization. And that, of course, is the mission. The organization's mission is its core purpose. Tesla's mission is to prove that electric cars could be better, quicker, and more fun to drive than gas cars. Number three, the possibility that events will occur 
and affect the achievement of strategy and business objectives. And that, of course, is that's risk. Risk is the possibility that events will occur and affect the achievement of strategy and business objectives. Number four, after management assesses the severity of risk, management then acts to alter the severity of risk with various risk responses. According to ERM, which of the following is said to remain? Hey, it's Darius. And after you like and subscribe, tell me what you think the answer is to this question in the comments below. Then go to cpaexamtutoring.com, home of the I-75 CPA review course, the perfect supplement to whatever CPA review course you're using, or you could use I-75 as a standalone course.